Hello again, and welcome to Tom's Thumbs, Spooktober edition. It is the season of Joasts, Jewels and Joblins, so Netflix have an apparition-tastic lineup of movies and TV shows. So, come with me and bring your pumpkin-shaped bucket as we collect the audio-visual treats of Ghosttober. But be prepared to throw a couple of eggs too. Tom's thumbs, Tom's thumbs, the thumbs that know a lot. Scary Toba. Let's look at a couple of TV shows first. The Haunting of Bly Manor. Mike Flanagan turns his gaze to another semi-gothic ghost story, applying the same treatment as he did to The Haunting of Hill House last year, by which I mean he read the cliff notes and made up his own story. This time, Flanagan adapts Henry James's novella The Turn of the Screw, and anyone familiar with the story of a young governess hired by a mysterious employer to look after two creepy children in his enormous mansion will realise that stretching it out to a 10 episode runtime is kind of a big ask. But we like Mike, so we'll allow it. Technically, a sequel to The Haunting of Hill House, Bly Manor is said to feature some of the same cast of characters. That seems like a marketing trick to me though as the plot of The Turn of the Screw doesn't really lend itself to any of the established characters that we saw in The Haunting of Hill House. So maybe take that with a pinch of salt and expect, or hope for, a more anthology format of this second season. Mike Flanagan frequently uses a play the hits approach to scares, using scary stuff that we've seen before and sometimes tipping over into the goofy zone. But anybody who can create a sequel to both the scariest horror movie of all time and a Stanley Kubrick movie and not completely screw it up deserves the benefit of the doubt. The Haunting of Bly Manor comes to Netflix on the 9th of October. Haunted Toba. A week later also sees the release of the French supernatural drama La Révolution. La Révolution appears to be an interesting idea in which the French Revolution is reimagined as a quest to wipe out a disease known as blue blood which forces the aristocracy to murder the poor. I said it's an interesting idea, although you might be better served by writing the word metaphor on a hammer and repeatedly hitting yourself over the head with it. With some horseback action and some dodgy looking CGI, La Revolution comes to Netflix on the 16th of October. Decapitation Toba. Thanks for watching these videos, fellow humans. If you like them, like them. And if you don't already, subscribe. It's not just my handsome face that you can see on the AV Forums YouTube channel. There's also weekly podcasts, tech reviews, guides, all sorts of stuff. And if you select the bell-shaped icon, you can be among the chosen few to be the first to know when we release a new video. And if that's not select enough for you, you can also join our top tier elites by going to patreon.com forward slash AV forums and becoming a patron for a small donation each month. This will then cement your position as a true acolyte. And you'll be able to have your say in what we talk about on the podcast. And you'll even get to see these videos before the general public. Ugh, the general public, ugh. Finally, I only talk about the dumb things that appeal to my dumb sensibilities. But if you want to know about everything that's coming to Netflix in October, then you should go over to avforums.com and read the lists curated and researched by Andy Bassett. Thanks, Andy. Quickly moving on to the movies, the first one we're going to look at is the 40-year-old version. The 40-year-old version is the story of Rada Black, a woman who was, 10 years ago, the most up-and-coming playwright in New York. So what happened? Giving up on the script writing and donning the stage name Radamus Prime, Rada is turning her sights on opening the hip-hop scene to the 40-year-old black female experience, promising some awkward, funny, defiant, and touching moments with shades of Cheryl Dunier in the trailer the movie shouldn't have much trouble winning you over. The black and white, okay, fine, it's a choice. I mean, it's, it's a choice. What stands out in the promo, however, is Rada's sharp tongue and her wit and the comedic and insightful opportunities to open up a new experience to a familiar space. Also, her stage name is Radimus Prime, like the Transformer, what? Developed from Black Stage Show and already receiving multiple garlands on the festival circuit this year, the 40-year-old version looks like it might be one to watch. And you can watch it on the 9th of October. Middle Age Crisis Toba.
The Trial of the Chicago 7, a dramatic recreation of the events of late 1968 and early 1969, in which seven protesters at the Democratic National Convention were arrested for conspiracy to riot. Written and directed by Aaron Sorkin, the courtroom seems the ideal situation for him to really stretch out and focus on what he does best, blindingly fast dialogue. I'm just going to quickly read a list of names. Michael Keaton, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Sasha Baron Cohen, Frank Langella, Mark Rylance. Yeah, I'll watch that. Okay, it's a sausage fest, but this is a story about men being tried by men in a male-dominated profession in a male-dominated era. So... Trial of the Chicago 7 hits Netflix on the 16th of October. Fast talking and walking down corridors, Toba. Rebecca. Fighting against the spectre of Hitchcock's masterpiece, Ben Wheatley's latest film adapts Daphne du Maurier's famous chiller, Rebecca. In my eyes, Ben Wheatley can do no wrong, if you casually ignore High Rise, so I will heartily endorse this film. I'm not, however, the biggest fan of screenwriter Jane Goldman, outside of her work with Matthew Vaughan. The lack of Vaughan's presence here leads me to suspect that we may be in for some pretty flat dialogue which is sort of the opposite of the pointed evasiveness required by the story. But with Wheatley at the helm, expect risk-taking and arresting visuals, and that's more than enough to warrant giving it a chance. Rebecca comes to Netflix on the 21st of October. Dead ex-wife Toba. Just a quick time to look at some of the other stuff that's hitting Netflix in October. Overlord, the massively over-the-top, almost adaptation of Return to Castle Wolfenstein. It is unabashed schlock and it's absolutely brilliant. Actually, let's skim through a few of these, shall we? The Conjuring. Good horror. Paranormal Activity 4. Bad horror. The Addams Family 1 and 2. Funny horror. Corpse Bride. Unfunny horror. Cadaver. Norwegian theatre horror. Hubie Halloween. Watch it and be cursed to sit through an Adam Sandler Netflix movie. The Grinch. Wait, that's not Halloween. Ah, uh, that'll do for that. Oh, finally, an unclassifiable one. Dick Johnson is dead. Filmmaker and documentarian Kristen Johnson attempts to come to terms with the rapidly approaching death of her father. The way in which she does this is by suggesting increasingly elaborate ways that he might finally meet his end. Part documentary, part drama, filled equally with dark comedy and touching acceptance, the film won a special jury award for innovation in non-fiction at the 2020 Sundance Festival. I would tentatively suggest that this one is unmissable. Dick Johnson is Dead comes to Netflix on the 2nd of October. Touching family tragedy Toba. Okay, the end. That's everything. Go to avforums.com and give Andy Bassett your clicks. He deserves them. His writings are truly excellent. Okay, that's it. I finished talking now. Bye. La Revolution, sorry. La Revolution, mother, I'll get it, I'll get it.